Hey Canucks fans, the Vancouver Canucks have defeated the Washington Capitals 4-2 in Washington. The Canucks' first win on this tough five-game road trip. Let's talk about what I liked, what I didn't like, and one other thing. I am Canuck Clay, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary, my post-game recap for Sunday, January the 16th. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. I'll do all my shoutouts, all my sponsor thank yous at the end of the video. And uh, one thing that I do want to say right now is usually on Sunday, I do my Ask Me Anything vlogs. Well, I'm going to save those for tomorrow. I'll record those tonight after my stream, but I'm going to save those for tomorrow because I've already just came off of a post-game live stream, an impromptu one. Thank you to everyone who joined me for that. I'm going to prepare for my members chat tonight for franchising up and then my regular Sunday night live stream tonight at 10. So all to say, um, I hope you join me if you're a member franchising up at 830 for the Zoom call, 10 o'clock for everyone for my regular live stream. And then I'll record my Ask Me Anything vlogs tonight, one for everyone and one for members. And those will be up tomorrow as opposed to today. So many things to like about this game. Bruce Boudreaux winning in his return to Washington, at least his return with the Canucks. I know he's been back there with his, his other teams. And um, let's talk about the team overall. Uh, I always like to start off with, as, as a team, the Canucks played well, 59% in the face-off circle. So yet another game where they dominate the face-off circle. And the biggest team thing for me today is special teams. Well, half of the special teams. For the first three games of this trip, Florida, Tampa, Carolina, the Canucks would go 0 for 3 or 0 for 2 in the power play. And they gave up one power play goal in each of those three games. Well, today, they gave up two power play goals. In fact, they went 0 for 2. Washington went 2 for 2 on their power play. But the Canucks went 2 for 4 on their own power play. So the penalty kill wasn't as good, but the power play was better. So technically, you know, 50% power play, 0% penalty kill. So that's a CCSTS. Clay's cumulative special team stat of 50%. That's not good. But I'm going to give my like then to the power play specifically. Going two for four, PD with one of those goals, Horvat with one of those power play goals, and overall simply looked a lot better. So let's talk about PD. I'm not sitting, going to sit here and say he's out of his slump completely, but what a difference. We saw the body language yesterday in Carolina when he got the stick to the face, when his stick broke, when he got tripped by Freddie Anderson as he cruised around the back of the net. Today, a completely, completely different PD. He scored on the power play. And I was even yelling. I admit I was yelling at the screen when he didn't shoot right away, but he drew the puck back and then ripped it by by the goaltender for his first goal, uh, Samsonov. And then for the... Uh, oh, Samsonov is how they say it. And then his second goal was a really smart play, actually, taking, um, getting his first shot from the slot, following the puck behind the net and putting it off of Samsonov's back. So PD with two goals, both in the second period. And those goals were actually just four and a half minutes apart. So really great game by PD playing on the wing with Horvat. It was still Horvat with PD. And it was Hoglander on the wing, the other side, because Garland was out with COVID protocol. So PD plays 18 minutes and he gets two goals with four shots on goal. So you had to like Pedersen's game. I love the game for Miller, Besser, and Pearson. Technically, they didn't score until the empty netter, but they were dominant uh, on the ice, especially the first two periods. Every time they got the puck in the, uh, the Washington zone, they were dominating. Washington was having trouble uh, playing against them. And we see it in the final possession stats where they had Corsi percentages of 75% each. So a great game for Besser, Miller, and Pearson when it came to um, the possession stats, especially. Bo Horvat, probably being our best player on this road trip. He was the best player yesterday in Carolina, although I forgot to give him a, a like, um, uh, uh, what I liked. But again, today, Horvat scores the game-winning goal on the power play at the end of the second period. Also gets an assist on Pedersen's first goal. And overall, two goals, two shots in goal, two hits, two blocks in 20 and a half minutes, including one minute of penalty kill time. So Horvat was once again doing it all and uh, you, you really like to see that. So um, great game again from our captain. On the blue line, I thought Hughes played a really good game with two minutes. Uh, sorry, two minutes, more than two minutes. He had two assists and uh, playing 25 minutes of ice time. And I thought he was the most noticeable. And Demko um, only allows two goals on 33 shots. And 
and some of those saves are really difficult too. And when you got, have guys like Ovechkin and Backstrom and Kuznetsov staring you down um, to hold them for two to two goals and both of them power play goals, so Demko was not beat at even strength. You got to like his game as well. So so many things to like: the the faceoff circle, the power play, Pedersen, Horvat, the Miller, Besser, Pearson line, Demko, Hughes. All of those, um, all those things, and I and I tweeted out. I'm really happy that I had Pedersen, Demko, Besser, Hughes, and Miller all in my keeper league. Okay, a couple things I didn't like. Uh, Kyle Burrows, I thought had a, a rough game. I know it's either Burrows or Hunt as the sixth defenseman, as Hamnick is still out. I would still love to see Rathbone come up instead of Burrows or Hunt. But after Hunt struggled yesterday, Burrows played today. Um, he had four hits, which I guess is good, but he also had four penalty minutes, which is fine. He had that double minor for roughing, but he also found himself out of position quite a bit. He was pinching quite a bit. And I think there's one shift where he pinched twice and he gave up. He was the reason why Ovechkin got back to back two on ones and Burroughs only played nine minutes of ice time. So that means guys like Myers, Ekman, Larson, and Hughes played close to 25 minutes each because only one of the six defensemen were only playing nine minutes. So I, th- I thought Burroughs did not have the best game up front, um, you know, one day after Dickinson, Podkolzin, and Hoglander really dominated the possession numbers, Dickinson and Podkolzin really struggled together today. And yeah, you see in their ice time, Dickinson only had 951, and Podkolzin had only 728, and then their winger, Chase on only 810. So I guess the, the line as a whole, as our de facto fourth line, Mott, Lamico, and Highmore became our third line. And those guys were getting 15, 16 minutes each. Then um, the Puck Holzen, Dickinson, Chasen line only got nine minutes uh, and f- or fewer for all three guys. So I wouldn't say that I didn't like their play. But um, yeah, you, you kind of want them to be a bit more noticeable. Uh, even it's still eight or nine minutes. It's not nothing. It's still, uh, it's not significant, but it is some time. So you want them to be a bit noticeable. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to really fault a lot in a, in a win because there wasn't anything glaring. I guess the other thing is the penalty kill going 0 for 2. That's uh, not great, obviously. Um, they've been a lot better under Boudreaux, but today they weren't great. Washington's going on both their chances. So maybe it's good that Canucks only took two penalties because the way Washington was going on the power play, and they don't waste any time. They they move the puck around, get in the slot, and boom, they score. That's Ovechkin's first period goal and Tom Wilson's third period goal. But overall, not going to complain about too much in a 4-2 win. One other thing, um, I, I think it's, it's Pedersen. What I'm really interested in is someone asked me on live stream, is this going to be the start of a resurgence for Pedersen? Or is he going to continue to, is it going to be a matter of time still before he fully gets his confidence back? And I think it can be a both and as opposed to either or. I think it's still going to take Pedersen for some time to work his confidence up. Yet I still think this can be the start of maybe a breakout for him. But and they can both go together. Whether that happens on the wing or the center, that was a really good question as well. I think Boudreaux keeps him on the wing. I think he keeps him with Horvat for a little bit to see how that goes, especially if he likes Miller in the middle. You can still go Miller, Horvat, Dickinson, Lamico down the middle. So we'll see. Um, but as soon as he wants Dickinson on the wing and put Petey back in the middle, but maybe he keeps Petey on the wing for at least a couple more games, continues to get, gain his confidence, and then now you have a much more confident Petey in the middle when you move him back there. Because remember, the center carries the puck a lot of the time. And Pedersen, with his lack of confidence, he wasn't the best puck handler for the past little bit. So maybe if you get him confident about his scoring and his other parts of his game, then that will translate into more puck handling as well. So all to say, I'm looking forward to see what Pedersen does. And whether it's on the wing or in the middle, it doesn't matter to me as long as he's producing. Canucks fans, let me know in the comments below what you liked, what you didn't like, and one other thing. Shout out to my hero members, Nux, oh, I better start again. Shout out to my legends, legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Justin Credible, legendary Andrew Chang, hero members, Nux fan number 29 and Carol Bovlander, Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Chris Seifert, Adam Brufield, Shannon Hollingworth, HSM, Fangirl Gaming, Smooth Groove, and Funk you. Thank you. I got to be careful how I say that. I got to stop saying that too. Uh, thanks for your support as always, including franchise and all-star members as well. You are all listed in my video descriptions. If you want to become a member of the CCC crew, press the join button underneath this or in my videos or in the membership tab on my YouTube channel. And thank you to my lead sponsors, Perform and Transform, Personal Training and Weight Loss. Sign up now for a free seven-day trial. Use the link in my video descriptions. And thank you to Van City Experts Real Estate Group. Contact Jason Lim and his team for all of your real estate needs. 
Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Become a member or upgrade if you like to. Leave a comment down below if you like to. What'd you like? What didn't you like? And tell me one other thing. Ask me anything vlogs. Push you tomorrow. Still streaming tonight at 10 p.m. Hope you join me. And 8.30 members and up, uh, franchise members and up our monthly Zoom call. Lots going on today, but it was a great start to the day with the Canucks 4 to win over Alice Ovechkin and the Washington Capitals. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a great day. God bless and go Canucks go.